Likely Sunday when you're watching this, I'm already behind on schedule, but a quick recap of the pairs I chose to just pull out when I wasn't wearing whatever that's by the door in the month of April, and then also a quick rundown of the movies I saw. And I've seen in the comments section by some of you, hey, can you go ahead and give us like full outfit looks for the shoes that you wore? I mean, respectfully, whenever I drop a shoe review or give my thoughts on a pair I just recently picked up, you get like four to six looks for that individual shoe. I've said this before, I'll say it again. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm going out with the intention of having on a fit to like capture attention when I'm just throwing on a pair. It doesn't. Sometimes I'm literally just throwing on a pair to run over to a friend's house, which means I could just be in essentials top and bottom hoodie and sweats and that's it. Like that, that I don't necessarily, I'm not going to necessarily try to get a whole look for that. Uh, my nephew pretty much is not in basketball right now, so not yet. He's in the summer. So when I was trying to go ahead and just show fits of what I may have been wearing, I was actually going somewhere. I'm not doing that all the time now, but you guys got a chance to see all of the pairs I wore. So there is some variety in there and far less. I know it's crazy, right? We go through 30 days in a month and these are the only pairs that you've worn. Listen, I work from home, so I don't have a reason to throw on a ton of shoes all of the time. And a late night Target run does not demand heat, okay? It just does it. It just does not. I can throw on some slides, some Californias, some Ultra Boost, and just go out the door. Uh, also, I've just come to realize too, for these, I gotta keep it short, you gotta keep it sweet, because you're only watching maybe a minute of these. I can look at the analytics, okay? These are not highly watched and regarded because it's not really sneaker content. It's just a random mix of, hey, here's my rotation for the previous month, or at least pairs. I made an effort to work into, uh, you know, pairs worn for that month. And then movies. So I'm actually filming this on the day I'll see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I'm a really big Baby Groot fan, even though he's not a baby anymore, but I'm a really big fan of all things in relation to Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'll see that. I know there are other movies dropping as well this month in May. So I'll be there front and center. In terms of sneaker pickups in May, I won't lie. This is looking like a dry month. In terms of retail or what's dropping this month retail, I, uh, I just don't see myself buying anything not right now at least i don't i know there are pairs dropping in the month of may i've seen the calendar releases and men women's doesn't matter they just don't feel like a need doesn't matter if it's a jordan 4 a jordan 3 like it just doesn't seem like a need for me personally so i've already ran down pairs that are on my radar to maybe reach back for and it could be something totally off of most people's radars like the dark russet pair that nike sb that is available on go i'm unsure i'm still very much so undecided if anything comes to the channel you guys will see hopefully i've actually put in the effort to get the fog one out to you hopefully i'm not really certain based on what i'm filming this if i'm able to get that out to you but hopefully i spent my friday being productive and getting that shot and out to you it'll be basic and quick because you've seen this shoe before i'm just excited to now have a grail pair within my collection but movies for april so you guys i'll actually just rank them where i felt that they were from like the best that i saw in that month down to the bottom and for air you you saw there's like two whole videos for air so i would kindly appreciate you watching those if you have not but air would rank up there as like the, just the top viewing for me uh right behind that is evil dead rise when i tell you they brought back gore and making you just like hide and shield your face this is what horror is about evil dead is just it is carnage it is I don't think I ever want to use a, tree, a cheese grater uh, again in life, like my leg tingles when I think about it, but Evil Dead Rise was so, 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 so good. So if you're into the Evil Dead franchise or just horror in general, they set it off with that one. I think Evil Dead Rise and Scream 6, I'm a really big fan. So if we go back to the other movies I saw, uh, I would have to put Pope's Exorcist behind that. Now there's nothing shocking about the way this movie plays out with it being an exorcism movie if you understand how exorcisms go and the movies 
then you know how this will go. But Russell Crowe is the real gem <coughs> in this. Excuse my voice, dealing with sinus problems. Russell Crowe is the real gem in this, hands down. Like, he's on this little scooter. He's a priest that drinks. It's just, it's really funny. It's got some dark humor in there. So I would put the Pope's Exorcist under that. And then behind that, I would actually put Renfield just for the comedy that's present in there. Not necessarily for Nicolas Cage, but for the comedy present in Renfield. And I like that character as well. If you are trying to place where you last saw him, he was also in The Menu, which I think was one of the best movies of 2022. I need to watch The Menu again. So that's good. Refresh my memory. But I will put Renfield behind there. It's a fun, comical thing. Y yeah, you get like a lot of... I guess explicitness just in terms of it being uh, gory because it's based on, you know, a whole vampire thing. But I would put it behind the Pope's Exorcist. And then actually, this is a toss up. I won't lie. Um, because if you guys, I don't even know if you saw a lot of advertisement for it, but Sisu and then 1001. So 1001 is the movie with Tiana Taylor and it takes you to some places like the movie is very trying to get through just because it's like you're in this emotional turmoil the whole time uh you don't really get a break with that in um inez trying to move her life forward but she seems to always just be like uh actually a factor that's holding herself back and making things more difficult and then there's a twist in there but there's a lot of love for her son and it's more than a notion, let me put it that way. So you have a thousand and one, and then Sisu, which is really John Wick, like a Finnish John Wick back in World War II. That's essentially how I, I just can put it. That's what it is. So if you want a lot of action and a lot of fight scenes and, and gunplay, then that is the movie for you. So that's why that's how I would run them down um, and just rank them like the best that I saw down to the bottom. But that's it for April. So time to move on to new movies, trying to work in new pairs, even though I can feel myself getting lazy already in the month of May, but we'll see what happens. Appreciate you tuning in. Go ahead and comment below the favorite or your favorite from the rotation uh, I gave you guys a, a look at. And then also any movies you saw in the month of April, as always, act your age, not your shoe size. Peace.